Good morning, guys. Thought I'd share a tip with y'all. Um, this is a uh, opening morning of our muzzleloading season. Uh, I'm up here in the foothills of the Ozarks hunting in a white oak flat on top of a ridge. And I uh, just thought of something I figured might be worth sharing. My father taught me this trick. And, uh, you know, we as humans, I know you can't see anything because it's still too dark, but we as humans, we're typically uh, going from point A to point B and we don't give any thought of in between. Uh, it's always just get to where you're going. So as deer hunters, we're, we, you know, wake up in the morning, eat our breakfast, leave the cabin, and we want to get to our deer stand. It's just a straight, steady, just... You hear my feet in those leaves, hopefully. And we're the only animal in the woods that walks like this. It's just a steady, you know, footstep after footstep after footstep after footstep. Never stopping to pause. If you pay attention when you sit in your stand, squirrels, deer, anything at all, is constantly stopping. There's no steady pattern to their steps. So they'll take a few steps and stop. And that's something my dad was real big at. So take two or three steps and stop and go slow, leaving plenty of time to get to your stand. A few steps and stop. Hopefully you guys can hear those leaves crunching. Now I'll give you another tip too my dad always told me. Not only take a few steps and stop, but step with the heel of your foot. Put your heel down, then your toe. Your heel and your toe. So I'll see if you guys can hear what I'm doing here. And stop. Now this is real hard to do. You really have to practice it and get in the habit of doing it. But if there's any deer bedded down in the area you're walking through, you won't spook those deer. They'll think it's just another animal passing through, a four-legged animal. So if you can start practicing that now, I promise you it'll be a good thing for you and your ability to uh, navigate the woods without disturbing it. I'm going to give you guys another little, little, hopefully you guys can hear this, but. I ended up getting up here this morning after I showed you guys walking in and right as I hung my uh, right as I hung my rifle on my pull rope I uh, had a couple of deer blow at me they were bedded down on top of the ridge but I uh, ended up seeing a doe and a yearling something spoke to yearling and it ran out into a little trail I had I uh, stood there and kept watching behind it I'm not sure what jumped it uh, but it stood there for a while and then went back back the way that it came and then I caught a glimpse of it and mom uh, Walking about as far as I could see on the ridge top. Uh, I got some footage of it. Hopefully it'll be usable uh, They're a pretty good distance away. So I don't know how How well it'll show up on the camera Anyway, I thought I'd show you guys now that it's daylight. I'd show you walking out of here what I was talking about on the hill toe so these dry leaf hardwood uh, forests, it, it's impossible to be quiet uh, as you're walking in, but we always try, you know, without success. So a way to combat that, let me see if I can get this on camera. So basically, we're walking these leaves and you want to place your heel and then put your toe down.
and then stop for a little bit. But basically all we're doing is we're mimicking a deer walking, a four-legged animal. You know, they don't take take steps like we do. They're uh, And I'm exaggerating a little bit just to show you guys, but uh, that's basically the concept. Oh, something else here, guys, as we're coming out, it's really neat. We've got an Indian marker tree right here on our property, just down from my deer stand. Well, you guys can see it there. These things are neat to research if you're interested in it at all. So basically the Indians would take a piece of leather and they would come into these young saplings and they would stake them down. They'd tie the leather strap on them, bend the tree over like this one here. They would tie a leather strap on it, bend it down, stake it down. Then as it grow, it would... Uh, it formed this shape as it got bigger. And research, you know, they say some of these trees are marking burial sites. Uh, some of them are marking campsites, uh, water, uh, a forage area. So the shape of the tree and the shape that they form it in is basically marking a trail system and telling them what's along that trail system. So this is basically the Indians' road signs before we had metal road signs. So an Indian would come through here, never been through the area, see this tree, and know what this tree was telling him in the area, and pointing in which direction, and uh, pretty amazing things to research. So check that out if you had never heard of them, and, uh, all right, guys, we made it out here for our afternoon hunt. Where we're hunting at, just up from my stand, there's a saddle. Right here, top of this ridge, where these ridges come together in this saddle point. And them deer cross that saddle, going from uh, ridge to ridge. But anyway, we've tucked in right here behind this fallen tree. And got everything set out. Got our Hawkins 50 caliber muzzle loader, our reload here on the log. Got a leaf scrape back in here where we're going to set at on the ground. But uh, hopefully, them deer will be moving through here this afternoon and we can get a shot at one. And uh, forgot to bring a strap to strap this little chair to the side of this tree. I told myself I was going to for sure grab that strap before I come down here this afternoon so when I sit on the ground. And forgot that strap again. So what I did, I took my my leather belt off. I cinched it to one bar of it. Wrapped it around that tree catching the top here. I went around the tree again and come up and cinched it up underneath this belt so whenever I put my weight on this chair it cinches down on this piece of leather which cinches it down on that tail end that locks everything to that tree so don't get disappointed if you regret something just see if you got anything on you that you can improvise with make it work that's the name of the game is just uh, just making it work Oh yeah, so that is definitely better than sitting on the ground. Alright guys, I just heard something behind me in the leaves. That's one good thing about the gnarled woods is animals can't sneak up on you. I'm pretty sure it's a squirrel. Not a deer. Sound. It's not an individual. 
individuals to have is more of a, a jump, stop, jump, stop, belly rubbing on the leaves. But anyway, we'll see if we can see it. Starting to get that time when the animals are going to be moving. I don't have, don't have very little doubt that the deer are going to be coming through this area here in a little while. been sitting out here probably two and a half hours. I think I got out here about two. Yeah, there's that squirrel. I don't know if you guys can see him or not. It's right at the top of that ridge and before it drops back over. I don't know how well this GoPro is going to do. With recording hunts like this, it's more of a close-up camera. We're going to give it a go this weekend and see how it does. Hopefully we can get some video out of it. I just stood up to stretch a little bit. And that squirrel behind me spotted me. Took off running to a tree and went up a tree and started barking. He was right over here. He started barking and it caused another squirrel over here to start doing an alarm bark. So hopefully there's not any deer close there hearing that alarm bark. But it didn't last long. Normally they're a lot longer than that. Get to the point to where it gets annoying when they're barking at you. I was hoping to get some of that barking on camera, but I don't believe it's gonna happen. Well, dusk is here. And I guess I'm uh, I'm getting what I deserve by stating my confidence earlier, not seeing the first deer. Seen plenty of squirrels. But dusk is here, and I'm not sure how long the GoPro will uh, will pick up and record as dusk gets here. So I thought I'd just do this now. So sorry, guys. Doesn't look like there's gonna be any footage of deer, but right now is when they're moving, so there's a good chance. There's still a good chance it won't come through between now and dark. And if it does, I'll uh, turn the camera on and hopefully you guys will be able to see. Good morning everyone, we're back out here. Got a lot of rain this morning. So we're sitting in the ladder stand with a little bit of a roof. never fails when you're muzzle holding nothing that it's gonna rain part of the time on your trip. That always puts down in my head about the powder getting wet and on fire if I do see one. But anyway, part of it. This morning with the ground being wet, we're not gonna be able to hear them coming like we were when it was dry. So we're gonna have to keep our head on a swivel and watch for movement. Because we're probably gonna see them before we hear them today. So hopefully we're able to get a deer harvested this morning. We'll just have to wait and see. Usually a good rainy day is good for movement. Because they realize that they got the cover too, as far as noise. Afternoon, second day, and uh, we didn't see anything this morning but squirrels. Uh, the rain's passed, the sun's out now, so we're down here walking into the stand. Uh, thought I'd show you another way to uh, 
to walk into the woods. Now, now the ground's wet and the leaves aren't dry and uh, crunching every step that we take. Well, here's another way you can walk in the woods that I found to be beneficial for me. I walked up on several deer doing this. It's, it's a little easier to learn and practice than that other step. But uh, what it is is basically it's a heel to toe step. It's shortening your stride. Instead of taking big strides, dropping all your weight on that front foot and shifting to your back foot and vice versa, dropping that weight, them big heavy foot crunches. What we're doing here is we're taking little bitty steps. So we'll take, take a step, come right in front of it with your heel almost touching your toe and take another step. And it's just, it's just real small steps. And what that does, that slows your body movement down. So instead of, instead of striding, taking big strides, up, down, a lot of movement. Just that heel to toe. So it takes almost all the movement out of your body, out of your upper body, your upper torso, by taking them small steps, just heel to toe, heel to toe. It's taking almost all your movement out except for your vertical movement. And as long as you still move slow, it's gonna be harder for those animals to pick up on your movement as you're moving through the woods. So give this a try. This is a lot easier than that, than that uh, four-legged step that we were talking about the other morning. And give this one a go. This one's this one works really well too. So just take seven to ten steps and stop. Do your 360 scan a couple of times. Looking for deer. I almost bet you guys if you'll incorporate this into your walking in the woods, you will be not only surprised by what you walk up on without them knowing you're there, but you'll also be surprised of what you see in paths that you take time and time again that you know like the back of your hand. I guarantee if you slow down your steps, slow down your walking, you will notice things along that path that you've never noticed before. And it won't take you long. So give this a try and see how it works. And if it works for uh, for your scouts when you're scouting out in the woods. And uh, see, if, see if you might, might like this. Hang tight guys. We're going to get back here to this log and get set up. And try to harvest this deer this afternoon. Alright guys. Right there is the ladder stand. We hunted this morning. And that first morning. That log that runs basically that next ridge up there, that log sitting on top of that next ridge where it drops down this valley and back up. I just thought of something too. We were thinking about walking quiet and stealthy in the woods. It really helps to have a pair of shoes with a thin sole on them. You know, with all the marketing and all the hype, uh, Everyone's got their favorite boot, and it's usually a bigger military type boot or a big heavy leather boot pull on. I tell you what, guys, I like I like a hiking style boot or a slip-on type shoe uh, with a thin sole when I'm walking in the woods, and that's because rocks, limbs sticks things like this i can step on this stick and feel it almost immediately as that foot starts to put pressure down on it and i can adjust my stance because of it if i had a thick soled boot on i wouldn't even know that stick was there until i crunched it and it broke but as you're walking with that thin sole you can feel what's underneath your foot and that allows you to adjust your weight differently or uh... so as you're walking I feel that I feel that branch through the sole of that shoe and I can adjust my 
my weight distribution or my stride and not make noise by having a soft sold thin sold shoe that makes a big difference when you're trying to be stealthy in the woods versus a big heavy thick sole that you're just crunching everything you step on because you don't even know it's there that's right up there's our log now so far this video hadn't been about harvesting any deer but what it has been about is to whether walk quietly or not quietly through the woods so to add to that, I'm, I'm a big framed guy, about 300 pounds, just under 300 pounds in weight. And if I can walk through the woods stealthy, then anyone else should be able to. The trick to it is slowing down. If you slow down, 90% of your problems take care of itself. But I'll show you another trick. We're almost here. So just slowing down is the main thing. But as you're walking, taking them short steps to minimize your movement, you've got your thin sole shoes on so you can feel what's under your foot. And you can distribute your weight accordingly. But on top of that, if you'll shift the majority of the weight that you put on your foot instead of flat down in the middle of your foot, if you'll shift that weight to the outside edge of your foot, that will help tremendously on the sound of each step too. So basically put your foot down. Instead of putting your foot down flat, put your foot slightly shifting that weight to the outside of their foot and when you step step with your heel and roll that weight to your toe on the outside edge of your foot again it's awkward at first if you're not used to it but that will help with your balance as well it helps, you, it helps you avoid something, whether it be a limb or a rock that comes up underfoot. It helps you shift that weight distribution easier. It'll steady you. Now, at first, it won't steady you because you won't be used to it. But eventually, you'll get to where you don't even notice you're doing it. And it'll make you more sure-footed. Guys, look at all these limbs, and I'm I'm barely crunching any of them. So just by slowing down, that takes care. Like I said earlier, probably 90% of the noise you're gonna make and the movement you're gonna make. And it allows you to constantly be on that 360 swivel of your head as well, watching for movement, picking out what critter it might be.
back to the populated world, I should have said, instead of the real world. What we're doing right now is actually the real world. We just gotta head back to the populated world. Alright guys, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next video.